looked in the black office. Uh, Malcolm and Carrie watched their computer screen as information flickered by its glowing green letters. The rest of the staff hadn't arrived yet. When they did, there was a good chance that they had uh, be sent right home. A carry had first gotten the call from Bill at around 5 in the morning. Bill had explained some of the details, then told him to bring Malcolm into the office to watch the news unfold on the computer. The information was coming through Tokyo direct from Wall Street was interface memos between killer's highest players were being copied and CCDs to head of various satellite offices who were on the need to know. Bill had somehow operated a link to the information ahead was broadcasting it to a second. George Jett, a carry said, shaking his hand. Christ, he's managing director. Malcolm ran a hand through his hair. It was still damp from the confined space of the helmet. He could still feel the tremors of the Ducati engines in his joints. Instead of leaving the bike at Carney's apartment and walking ten blocks to the office, he had given a car a lift. Probably a strange sight, an American flying through the city streets on a $50,000 racing bike with a gangly Amerasian kid uh, dangling off his back and locked the bike up in the front lobby. He'd have to return it after the work they ended, which might be uh, much sooner than he hoped. Joe Jett was more than a managing director. Carney was a star. Jett was a supernova. Just a few years after joining Killers, the Harvard Business School and Brad Turn, uh, the company bought department into a cash machine. He had gone from bringing a $400,000 in his first five months to bringing up $28 million during his second year with the firm. Just six months earlier, he'd been named Man of the Year, and he'd made managing director, having brought in a stage and $150 million of profit, earning himself more than... 9 million in bonus. Malcolm had been hearing stories about him since he had arrived in Osaka. Currently, 25 million dollars in profit a year didn't rival Jet's numbers, and Jet was working in bonds and not the volatile Asian market. It was considered a real life magician, alchemist who had been seen paper into gold. According to computer terminal in front of Malcolm, Jet wasn't a magician. He was uh, quite possibly a liar and a thief. Joseph and Jet will be summarily dismissed. The carrier read the machine. He's been blamed for $350 million charge to earnings. He, they say his profits were paid result of accounting glitch. A glitch. A mistaken program that had allowed Jet to report profits when in fact it was incurring losses. It was unclear from the information in front of Malcolm how much money Jet had cost the company, but from the panicked emails he saw flashing across the screen, it was enough to put the entire company in jeopardy. Killer had only recently been purchased by General Electric, a massive corporate conglomerate that made everything from light bulbs to TV shows. The GE was the by the books company and household names. They weren't going to suffer something like this lightly. If what Malcolm was reading was true, not only was Jet was going fight, but Killer was going to post a massive loss instead of profit. J.A. was going to look at the company they had just bought, and instead of seeing an incredible magician taking money hand or fist, they were going to see a magic act, glitz, glamour, and it's hard bullshit. Uh, Malcolm wasn't an expert in corporate finance, but he had fairly good idea what this was going to mean for Carney in Tokyo and their settled operation in Osaka.